Hi guys, my name is Peter and welcome to our channel. Uh, in this video tutorial I'd like to show you and tell you a little bit more details on my PS2 portable and explain you how, how that system was made. I pretty much on uh, so many requests people asking me to make a video tutorial uh, how I make it step by step and the thing is the system already built uh, and I mean pretty much I will have to kind of show, show it to you and explain you uh, how I did. Anyway, uh, but right now it's a good opportunity because I'm repairing this system. If you saw my previous video, you know the main board did uh, crap out a couple years ago and now I got new main board, pretty much I'm going to re repair. And first, let me show you the system itself. Well, right now it's an empty case. And like I mentioned before, I built that system four years ago. Uh, it's based on a PS2 Slim. It has an original DVD drive it's using. It's not running on a flash drive, you know, like uh, you probably saw already uh, some people do that. I mean, it's nothing wrong probably about flash drive because I'm currently also building PS2, another PS2 Slim. It will be smaller and lighter than this guy. And it's running on, it's gonna run on a flash drive, not on the DVD drive. But uh, this system, when I built it four years ago, it was the smallest and lightest uh, PS2 Slim with DVD drive. It may hold it, it may, it, I'm sorry, it may still hold it a title, the smallest and lightest one, PS2 with DVD drive. Uh, anyway, uh, pretty much, uh, like I mentioned before, all my cases for uh, all my handhelds is made by hand. A 3D printer or mold, I mean plastic molding was not involving. Anyway, uh, it was like that. It, it's quite comfortable to hold it, and it was not too too heavy. Uh, up in, uh, when it uh, was up and running uh, with battery with game, it was uh, exactly two pounds, uh, or in uh, kilos, it's uh, nine hundred ten grams. It was pretty good. Uh, shoulder buttons, uh, second memory card, power switch. Uh, charging port. It was kind of simple, especially it was my first ever uh, PS2 portable. Like I said, I mean, that, that, that was volume. Inside, let me open it and you guys will see how, how inside looks. There was two batteries, uh, 14, I mean, I'm sorry, 18 650s, uh, 3400 milliamp, uh, second me me memory card uh, connector. On this side, LCD uh, display, 5 inch, uh, controller board for, 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 uh, for display, uh, board from controller, and there's boards for uh, analog and uh, D-pad and action buttons. Like I said, the case was, was pretty good. I mean, kind of like it, the way it turns. Then uh, let me show you my old, which was already dead, motherboard. It's from PS2 Slim. I trim it make it a little bit neural to make sure it will fit in my case also remove it couple connectors for DVD drive uh, ribbon cables and those connectors it was quite hard to remove it especially this guy with 24 pin the pins so close to shutters and you have to remove it without damaging because you will have to extend the wires and reset it back uh, pretty much uh, this is 20, uh, 24 pins this is a uh, 12 pins. This guy is quite quite easy. Anyway, uh, and then also another things I'd like to show you. You see uh, some components I painted red. Why why I did that? Because when everything was about to put in together, I recognized the system will not close it. Uh, probably like 116. Uh, it's it's it, the inside guts is too uh, too thick. What I did, pretty much with fresh paint. I uh, marked all components with sticking out compared to the, the, those two chips, uh, probably millimeter, millimeter and a half, and then flip it back panel and attach, uh, to attach it to make sure those red paint will leave it marks on uh, plastic. And with Dremer tool, I machine it to make uh, that board bring it that one millimeter and a half closer, and then I was able to close it. Uh, and that's a, like I said, original DVD drive from uh, 
from PlayStation 2 here pretty much no modifications uh, cables you have to re uh, rearrangement but everything else is still almost in the factory configuration then I use it uh, metal uh, cooling fan from another PS2 I'm not sure if that uh, that was from slim but I don't remember what model was why I stick with the metal one first of all uh, of course, uh, the, some of them they do have plastic casing, some of metal. And the metal one, I believe, is like a millimeter thinner. Also, you see those arms which is holding fan, I bend it in. The plastic one, you not can bend it, it will break. Metal one, I bend it in to make sure the cooling fan, when, when, when you fit it to uh, metal shielding, it's, it's lower it. That's when I try to get that uh, 216 inch uh, gap, expansion gap, and to close it, to the table close it. Yeah. Plus it, it, it produces it more, it more efficiently run with metal casing than plastic. That's my thoughts. Well, anyway, the new, new, new motherboard, I already trim it from both sides. First, before I trim it, I remove it all connectors. Even this guy has been removed also. Because this side, I also have to trim it. Uh, anyway. I I trim it over here, probably 316 or so, and on this side. Now it's uh, neural enough to to fit in, and it's a four-layer motherboard. If you guys are gonna try to make a, a your own portable system, I can give you a little uh, advice on trimming. Don't trim it all sides. For example, you kind of mark it wherever it's supposed to be, and start trimming all sides uh, right away. No. Do one time, uh, 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 pretty much one side at a time. That case, when you when you cut one side, you can test that board to make sure it's still running. Because if you cut something, uh, which uh, you lose audio or video, it's easy to tr to track it. But when you cut all four corners sides, then it will be difficult. Anyway, like I said, I trim it, then I remove it those connectors, and let let me show you the connectors. They are so small. Especially this guy with 24 pin, uh, 12 pin in each side. They are really, really close to each other. Really, probably like a half millimeter apart. And you have to remove it without overheating and without damaging the connector. Then I use it uh, probably what, six, seven inch wire and extend it. Same thing here. Remove it, extend it, and test it motherboard first, and then I did apply it uh, epoxy. Don't like sorry start it all wires and apply the epoxy then what you're gonna do if it doesn't work anyway guys yeah pretty much <sighs> that my uh, repair how it's going on the ps2 also i'd like to show you that metal shelling i did cut it remove it so some some extra metal which another another needed then over here i attach it i believe it's a 128 megabyte uh, internal memory card for slot one and for slot 2, like I mentioned before, it will it, it, it's using this guy. I mean, it will use the original uh, PS2 uh, memory card. Uh, pretty much, yeah. And also, I'd like to show you, uh, this guy, since uh, system was used and getting older, uh, uh, it doesn't read very well discs. If you, if you guys eventually will have the same issue like I did, uh, it stopped reading DVD disc or CD disc uh, before replacing uh, a laser module. The, uh, 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 there's a couple couple adjustments you can make it. Uh, this this for DVD, I believe this for CD, and you just turn it clockwise a little bit. Maybe uh, I should set a couple degrees or so. Try it first and see how it runs. Like I said, uh, when when I was testing new motherboard. I recognize it. It doesn't. It doesn't read uh, some disk. I tweak it a little bit more, slightly more, and it reads no problem. Well, guys, uh, that's gonna be kind of short um, tutorial on my PS2 Slim. I hope it's gonna be. It, it will be useful for someone. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you do, thumbs up. If you don't want to miss any future videos, subscribe. We will really appreciate. It.